Hi, my name's Gronya Canole, and in this short presentation, I want to give you an overview of our seven C's of learning design conceptual framework, which will form the basis of a number of the activities in week three of the OLDS MOOC. The learning outcomes, as stated in the uh, week for the week, are the following: conceptualize the learning design process from different perspectives. Apply a range of learning design resources, tools and methods to a learning intervention. Critique a range of pedagogical approaches and the role played by different technologies in supporting these. Review and debate the theoretical underpinnings of learning design and develop an innovative storyboard, learning activities and structure for implementation. So the premise related to these conceptual learning designs that we have developed is that social and participatory media offer a plethora of ways in which students can communicate and collaborate. And there are now a wealth of free resources and tools available. But the reality is that these technologies are not fully exploited or used extensively in learning and teaching. There's a lot of replication of bad pedagogy and teachers state that they lack the necessary time and skills to develop innovative approaches to learning. And that they fear that they haven't got the right kind of digital literacy skills that they need to be able to harness the potential of new technologies. So in the last 10 years or so, a new sub-area of e-learning has emerged, that of learning design. And this is our take on it, in that it's about a, a, adopting a much more design-based approach to the creation and support of courses. And it helps to shift to the design practice from one that's really belief-based and implicit in our heads to one that's much more explicit and design-based. And we argue that this encourages reflective scholarly practice and it promotes the sharing and discussing of learning and teaching ideas and designs with others. So two of my colleagues at Leicester have been helping me work on this in the last year or so, uh, Gabby and Ming, in particular through a JISC-funded project at uh, Speed. And it also builds on the work that I was involved with at the Open University prior to joining Leicester in September 2010, namely, uh, sorry, 2011, namely the work under the OULDI um, initiative. So this is the conceptual uh, framework that we have developed, which combines the OULDI work with the work that Leicester have been doing in terms of their Carpe Diem learning design workshops. So the seven seeds of learning design are as follows. The first is the vision for the course, which is about conceptualising. What are you designing? Who are you designing it for? And why are you designing? And then there are a number of uh, C's related to activities. Capture relates to doing a resource audit of what kind of resources, open educational resources, multimedia you're going to include for the students. But it also includes examples where the learners can generate their own content. Communicate and collaborate are about fostering uh, more effective ways in which students can communicate and collaborate. And consider refers to the uh, reflective and assessment component of the learning intervention. And then there's a combination C, which is about providing a guided learning pathway. It's about uh, combining the activities into um, an overarching course view map, etc. And then finally, it's about implementing or consolidating and running the design in a real learning context and evaluating, refining it and sharing it. So there's a link at the bottom of the slide here to the resources uh, that we've developed uh, for each of these C's. And I'm just going to show you some examples and in this week's work you'll get a chance to explore those yourself. So the first is the course features view which sits under the first uh, C conceptualise. And that's about articulating a vision for the course. What kind of pedagogical approaches are in scope? Is it about problem-based learning? Um, is it about dialogic learning, constructivism, good old drill and practice, what have you? What are the principles associated uh, with the course? A third uh, level art history course, for example, would probably have a, a principle to do with aesthetics. Um, an engineering course might have um, team-based learning as an important principle. Then it's about uh, articulating the guidance and support that will be provided, the content and activities the students will engage with, the reflection and demonstration, and finally, communication and collaboration. And as you can see from the picture here, we've developed a little, a very nice little course pack that um, uh, we use in face-to-face in -face workshops. But you can also do the course features uh, in an online uh, tool such as Linoit, which is a sticky note um, tool, or just simply in a Word file. So the principles include things like um, applying theory, 
um, to practice, cultural dimensions, maybe it's about um, a professional aspect of the course, uh, maybe it includes elements of serendipity in the course. The second angle in terms of course features are the pedagogical approaches. As I mentioned before, it might be problem-based, it might be about inquiry learning, it might be didactic, it might be collaborative in nature. And then the guidance and support includes what kind of guided learning pathway will the student be provided with, what kind of study skills or support, additional support are available, is it about step-by-step -step instruction, is there peer support provided, is there remedial support for those who are struggling. Content and activities include the following, for example, it might be uh, the students are engaging with a, a, a jigsaw pattern for collaborative learning, it might be that they're handling information, generating their own content, annotating resources, etc. Reflection and demonstration includes the assessment elements, which might be diagnostic, formative or summative, it might include some form of peer feedback, it might be through e-assessment in online tools, etc. Collaboration and communication include the following kind of things. It might be that the students are working on a group project together. They might be required to peer critique other resources that students have developed. It might be a for and against debate, for example, or it might be a group presentation. So here's a, a snapshot <coughs> of uh, the course features pack, which you can develop in the Linoit tool. And uh, for each of these examples, there's a link to the Etivity rubric that we've developed, which gives you more detail of what you need to do. So you'll be engaging in this activity uh, during this week's uh, activities on the MOOC. The next uh, conceptual view, uh, which um, is about the course map, and this uh, provides you with an overview of the course in terms of what guidance and support the students are being provided with, what content and activities they're engaging with, what kind of reflection and demonstration is included in the course, and what forms of communication and collaboration are there. The third conceptual view is the activity profile, and this enables you to map the nature of an amount of time that the students will be spending on different kinds of activities. Assimilative activities are things like reading, listening, viewing. Information handling might be manipulating a data in a spreadsheet, for example. Communication, for example, in a forum. Production in terms of creating something, an architectural model, uh, a new chemical compound. Experiential in terms of drill and practice or applying in a work-based context. Adaptive is quite a specialised uh, type of activity. S things like modelling and simulation, which might be important in science courses. So it might be that the students work on a simulated pendulum and can alter the variables to see the effect on the swing. And finally, the amount of time they're spending on assessment activities. And the picture shows you a link to... Um, the activity profile widget that we've developed, which um, is available via the CloudWorks site. So again, the next slide just shows you the, uh, uh, the activity that you'll be engaging with and a link to the full uh, activity rubric. And finally, the storyboard is about putting everything together. And as you can see in this example, we've got uh, the pink in terms of the topics, the yellow in terms of the assessment, and the green in terms of the activity. So you create um, a timeline storyboard uh, with a set of activities over time linked to tools and resources. And this is an example of a storyboard we developed for a learning design module uh, that we've got as part of a Masters in Learning Innovation that we'll be running uh, next year at the University of Leicester. So going back to the 70s of learning design again, and just to give you a kind of broader perspective on some of the other conceptual views that we've developed, um, which um, we're not specifically doing in week three, but through the uh, link to the 7 Seeds toolkit, you can find them if you'd like to go through them in more detail. Under conceptualize, which is about the vision for the course, it's about why, who and what do you want to design, it's about indicating the key principles and pedagogical approaches of the course, and about, it's about considering the nature of the learners. So in particular, you will have worked through the course features conceptual view, and in a previous week, you'll have worked through the uh, personas uh, idea in terms of articulating the types of learners that are going to be attending the course. Capture is about finding and creating interactive materials. This might be a resource order of existing OER that you might use. It might be planning for the creation of additional multimedia to include in the course, such as interactive materials, podcasts or videos. And it's about mechanisms for enabling learners to create their own uh, learner-generated content. 
Communicate is about designing activities that foster communication. This might be looking at the affordances of the use of different tools to promote communication. What are the pros and cons of different tools? And it might be designing for effective online moderating. Similarly, Collaborate is about designing activities that foster collaboration. Again, it might be looking at the affordances or characteristics of different tools and, and the ways in which they can promote collaboration. Or it might be using something quite specific, like the CSCL, uh, Collaborative Pedagogical Patterns, such as the Jigsaw uh, uh, Pedagogical Pattern, where you divide a problem into four, or the Pyramid uh, Pedagogical Pattern. Consider is about helping the students to foster reflection, uh, this includes conceptual view, which helps you to map the learning outcomes to assessment. But it also might be about designing assessment activities, whether they're diagnostic, formative, summative or peer-based. And again, we can also use uh, some assessment pedagogical patterns that have been produced. Combine is about combining the learning activities to give an overarching view of your design at this stage. The course view, which you will work through, provides a holistic nature of uh, overview of the course. The activity profile shows the amount of time that learners are spending on different types of activity. The storyboard provides you with a temporal sequence of the activities mapped to the resources and tools. And finally, a learning pathway enables you to develop a temporal sequence of the learning designs that you've included. And finally, Consolidate is about applying it into practice, whether that's in a classroom or through a virtual learning environment or learning management system, or using some specialised learning design tool such as the um, learning designer tool that you'll be looking at next week uh, in Diana Loridard's uh, section of the course, or the LAM uh, system that's been developed by James DL in Australia, or there's a whole range of other very specific learning design tools. It also enables you to evaluate the effectiveness of the design and refine based on this uh, evaluation, and then enabling you to share with peers through social media, such as sites like the CloudWorks sites that we're using as complement to this course. So that just gives you um, a brief overview uh, of the seven C's which provides the conceptual underpinning uh, for this week's work. I hope you find it useful and I really hope you enjoy the course.